Good Monday to all of you, and thanks for joining me, Mr. McLean, and my motivational message for Monday. Any given Sunday is uh, today's theme. I think uh, it's appropriate. It's NFL season, and of course, I'm spending my uh, Thursday nights through uh, Monday nights watching football. And anybody who watches football is very familiar with uh, the term any given Sunday. In fact, it gets used for a lot of different sports and in other situations. And the whole concept behind any given Sunday is that you can have uh, two teams come out onto a field and there's an expectation that one team is going to win. Uh, and, And the odds makers in Vegas have that detailed out and all the commentators before the game have have chosen their picks and they, they, they can all choose the same team to win because uh, that team has the best quarterback or the team has the best coaching or the team is most prepared or whatever it might be. But as soon as the whistle blows and the ball is kicked, there is any number of situations that can happen on that football field that can deliver a different outcome. And it kind of alludes to this idea that uh, that football has a randomness to it. It has a certain aspect to it that is um, that is unexpected. And so on any given Sunday, every team has a chance uh, to win. I think even this year, I'm sitting there looking at um, scores from, from yesterday. I'm sitting here thinking, how are the Oakland Raiders 2-1? and one? I mean, who would have guessed that the Raiders would have started their season 2-1? and one? I think that may even be two, when they've won two more games than most people had projected or – I mean, who would have guessed that Ben Roethlisberger and Tony, Tony Romo would be out for the rest of the season and the Steelers and, the, and the, the Cowboys would be using backups for the rest of the season. It's, uh, it's unheard of. Or even uh, Arizona Cardinals beating the 49ers 41-7. to I mean, again, there's, there's a randomness to the game, the, an unpredictableness to the game that tells you, hey, any given Sunday, anything can happen. And uh, the same thing is true in life. Uh, Life is random. Life is unpredictable. I was uh, reading a quote uh, from Solomon in his book of wisdom called Ecclesiastes. And uh, the quote goes, The race does not always belong to the swift. The battle does not always belong to the strong. The wise will sometimes hunger, and the skilled will not gain wealth, will not always gain wealth. And I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like looking at this proverb from Solomon, and I'm sitting here thinking, man, that's, that's terrible. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's, it's true. Uh, you, you get into a race, and um, the winner isn't always the one that everybody knows is the fastest. I mean, one guy can hold a world record, and they have a sprint, and it, just because he holds the world record doesn't mean he's the fastest uh, for that particular race. There's any number of factors that can uh, change the outcome of that race, or you know, the battle doesn't always go to the strong. And that was something that I learned uh, growing up uh, wrestling. I remember joining wrestling, oh, in like third grade, fourth grade, and um, I would get onto that mat and I would look at the guy, and the guy looked bigger than me and be like, "Man, I'm losing," you know. And immediately, and then over the course of time, as I stuck with it and got into college, it's like you can look at a guy, but just how he looks. I mean, if he looks stronger, he looks tougher, he looks meaner, doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to win the match. I have, I have a very good friend. Uh, who I wrestled with, Paul, um, who uh, wrestled a weight class lower than me. You know, and he was he was tall and, and rather thin. Um, and you wouldn't look at Paul and say, oh, man, there's, there's a guy who's just strong. But he was faster, and he had better skills than a lot of guys. And so he would get into a match, and it would be like, man, that other guy, I don't know how he's going to handle the strength of the other wrestler. And in 30 seconds, he could have him in a pretzel because um, he was quicker and, and uh, could think – ahead of the other guy a lot more, and it overcame all the strength that the other guy had. Um, the the wise sometimes go hungry, and this is true. You have uh, people with PhDs who can't get jobs or uh, college education who, who can't get a job. Um, I save, my same friend Paul 
I was uh, spent some time with him a couple of years ago. He lives in Philadelphia, and he, he helps at a uh, men's shelter working with men who um, uh, have lived on the streets and lost everything. And he goes, you know what, uh, Chris? He says, a lot of these men in here, they're not here because of drugs. They're not here because of alcohol. They're not here because they're gamblers um, or things like that. He says, a lot of the men here are because uh, the economy turned on them. And uh, they lost everything. They lost their house. They lost their job. They lost their family. And now they're, they've resorted to living on the streets because they, they have nowhere else to go. And he says, I'm just here to help help them put some of the pieces back together and get back on their feet and, uh, and find that job to get steady employment, to recover from their debt and things like that. It had absolutely nothing to do with them and their intelligence. Uh, it just had to do with the circumstances. And again, that, that randomness in life, the unpredictability, the fact that there are no guarantees. Or uh, the last one in that proverb is that um, uh, oh I can't think of it now um, oh the skilled uh, don't always uh, gain wealth and again there there is truth to that there are some people throughout history who have thought of really incredible inventions. And, uh, and yet, you know, even think about Leonardo da Vinci and his, his journal, his diary, and all those inventions, flying machines and, and tanks and helicopters and all kinds of stuff. Um, but he'd have to wait several hundred years before any of that was invented, you know. And it's this idea that, you know, people can have great ideas and people can have incredible skills and intellect, but it may not be the right time for it. People might not be open to that thing, you know, in 30, 40, maybe, you know, a century down the road, they are, but that person's not going to get any credit. And uh, they're not going to get any wealth uh, from that. And so there's a, there's a randomness to life, there's an unpredictability to life that we all may have to, uh, to deal with, uh, despite the fact that we work really hard to control all the events in life. And we do that. Even I, even I do that. You know, we, we set up our, our budget and our finances to avoid going into large debt or we set those things up so we, if something were to happen, we'd have this month cushion of money to carry us over. Or we, we do things to protect our home. We have a dog. We have an alarm system. Uh, things like that that will say, hey, this is going to protect us from a home invasion. And we do things in life to control things so that we have a, a very steady life. But what's to stop the tornado from taking out your house? You know, what is to stop a thief from coming in while you're gone and taking everything? Um, what is to keep the economy from losing your job? You, we can do all the right things. We can make all the right decisions, and yet there's a randomness to life that we cannot control. There's an unpredictability to life that we cannot control. And at times, people find themselves on the bottom. At the times, we may find ourselves on the bottom. And it, it, it may not seem fair. It may not seem right. But that's just part of life. So there are two things I want everybody to understand here uh, about what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say give up <laughs> because life is just random and unpredictable, so just give up. I'm not saying that at all. Number one, what I'm saying is, is I hope this helps you understand at times that when you look at people and they look like they're at the bottom, it's not always their fault. It isn't. Uh, and sometimes it is. But it, it's important to understand the context. Sometimes they're there because of circumstances beyond their control. They're at the bottom because of the economy. They're at the bottom because of somebody else's decision. They're there for some random unexpected thing, and it, it's, it's not their fault. So understand that and you know help them work through that. Don't judge them for it and say, oh, it must be drugs or it must be you know uh, alcohol abuse or something. Uh, it may just be life life dealt them a bad hand and that's where they ended up uh, secondly I think what's important for us to know is when we find ourselves there uh, we need to make sure that we can always look back and say I did my best I worked hard there's a an Olympics it was the 2000 Olympics in Athens Greece and there was a marathoner 
uh, who was running the marathon at the end. I can remember this because I, I believe I watched almost the entire marathon uh, that year. Very strange for me to do, but he was uh, he was ahead um, well over halfway through. He was by himself in ahead. I, I believe the the um, the announcers were talking about him setting an Olympic record on this course, uh, maybe even a world record at the time. And uh, because of his pace and how far ahead he was of everybody, and they were just really expecting him to win the gold. And as he's moving along, he's in the last 10 miles of the race. And uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody jumps out of the crowd and tackles him. You know, here's this guy. He is way ahead of the group. Uh, the announcers are expecting an Olympic record, maybe a world record, definitely a gold medal. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, unexpected, unavoidable, uh, randomly, somebody tackles him to the ground. Uh, some people in the crowd uh, get that man off of him. They help him back up. He gets going again. But his, the problem is, is he could never get his pace back. He could never establish, reestablish that pace. And slowly over time, the guy in second passes him. Slowly over time, the guy that was in third passes him. And eventually, as he comes in to the the track there in the big theater, they're coming to the finish line. He crosses the finish line in fourth place. You know, here's a man that they were talking about, Olympic record, world record, gold medal. But because of some random, unpredictable event, he comes in fourth. But I believe what's most important about him finishing fourth is that he finished. So when life is random, when that tornado comes through and you find yourself on the bottom, be sure that when you look back in life, you can at least say, I worked hard, I did my best, and I finished. Thanks for joining me again today. Please leave a comment. Please hit like if you enjoyed this. Uh, even subscribe to my channel if you want to make sure you get uh, notices that I've posted something new. But again, most of all, I really hope that, that this uh, is a thought for the day that will help you as you move forward in life. Thank you very much.